Hello everyone, Athelotos here. And yeah, this is one more 386 video. And this time the focus is on the Intel version of the 386. This is the original 386, marked as 80386DX. The AMD chips came later, and of course today we are comparing these two. Now, probably many of you are already thinking that this comparison is actually pointless, as it is well known that uh, all these chips are actually internally the same, and in the end the AMD ones will always clock higher. However, while I was testing these chips here, to my amazement found out that uh, these are not actually performing the same. Then, of course, I also tried to find the limit of the Intel 386, and I managed to get a very nice overclock. Now I wanted to do this video for a long time, however I decided to first finish with all my mods and optimizations on my 386 system. So yeah, now I think it's the right time, as I can really show to you the peak performance that you can get from the Intel variant. So stay with me with this video, I promise you it will be a very interesting one. So now first of all let's have a look at our chips, all these at least visually are different. Starting from the AMD ones, uh, these two ceramic chips are both marked as AM386DX uh, slash uh, DXL, but uh, the writing and the ceramic color is different. This is grey, this is a classic purple one. Measuring these chips I didn't notice any difference, so it's probably just a different factory or something. The writing in the back is also quite similar. Then there is the SMD version of this chip. This is the classic chip that you will find integrated in many 386 motherboards, and here is just placed in an adapter. Now the only difference here is probably that uh, this is only marked as AM386DX, so the DXL is missing, but again I didn't notice any performance difference, and uh, researching this a bit looks like that the L means just the low power while idle. Now, before we go and have a look on my Intel 386 chips, I would like to point out something here from the Wikipedia page. You see, when Intel first produced uh, this, it faced a lot of problems. Early production, Intel discovered a marginal circuit that uh, could cause the system to return incorrect results from a 32-bit uh, multiply operation. Now, this might not uh, sound uh, that bad, but in practice uh, these chips were completely useless with 32-bit workloads. So, not all uh, processors already manufactured were affected. Intel tested its inventory, and the processors that were found back free were marked uh, with uh, double sigma. The affected processors were marked with 16-bit uh, software only. So, this is an early chip with the marking 16-bit uh, software only, and the double sigma one. Now, of course, uh, later batches of these processors were also bug free, as they did some design bug fixes. And these chips are all marked with the IV code. Now, unless uh, you just want to have a complete collection, in general, I suggest you to only go for chips with a marking double uh, sigma or uh, IV. So, now back to our chips, and uh, let's see what we have. First of all, all these have an IV marking, so these are bug free chips. The logos are a bit different here. This one is a later chip, so it looks like this is the newer logo. Now these two are actually different. The right one is an 8386DX-25, and the stepping is SX218. The left one is a 33MHz model, stepping SX211. And as we can see, this has the marking of uh, double sigma. So this is probably an older model, and uh, this is probably a little bit uh, newer, but it's the 25 MHz one. Then the last one, yeah, as I said, has the new logo, and of course it's not the double sigma variant, and the stepping is uh, SX544. So all of these chips actually clocked at uh, 40 MHz without a problem. Yeah, this also includes the 25 MHz one. So judging from this, yeah, if for your motherboard either way the maximum possible frequency is 40, then you can also use the Intel chips without a problem. Now regarding performance, as I said, uh, all these are not the same. The newer ones performed exactly the same as the AMD counterparts. But uh, this one, uh, the SS variant, actually performed higher. And uh, this is a finding that I was not expecting. It looks like that Intel, in order to permanently fix this bug here, had to cut some corners in the later revisions of the 386. 
And uh, that's why also they marked with this double sigma here to distinguish the old chips from the newer ones. Unfortunately, I don't have more of these uh, double sigma chips, but from my measurements, it's clear that uh, this one is faster. Now again, uh, regarding the other, the next revisions, these are actually 100% exactly the same as the AMD ones, so it doesn't really make sense to measure them. So in the end, uh, today's comparison will be between uh, our standard AMD, AM 386X, and this uh, Intel 386 double sigma chip. So let's now go directly to the results. And first of all, the comparison is at uh, 40 MHz. And yeah, I had to repeat all the measurements because of course here now I have all my optimizations. I'm using of course my fully modded and optimized M326 motherboard with uh, 256 uh, kilobytes of gas, zero weight state uh, RAM, and my TVGA is a VGA card with an 80 bus clock of a one third uh, CPU clock. The floating point unit is a ULSI one. Now here I run all the important benchmarks. 3D Bench, uh, Chris uh, 3D Bench, PC Player Benchmark, Doom, Quake, VGA Speed, and also the integer and floating point score from Checkit. Then we have the total for all the integer tests, and the floating point tests, and the complete uh, total. The benchmarks uh, marked with yellow are the integer ones, and the red is the floating point ones. PC player benchmark, uh, yeah, because this uh, runs even without a floating point unit, but it is accelerated by one, it contributes in both uh, scores. So looking at uh, all this, 3D Bench performs the same with both CPUs. With uh, Chris 3D Bench, the double sigma variant is 2.3% uh, faster. PC player benchmark 2.4% faster. Doom had a significant increase of 4.4%. Uh, Quake 2.9%, uh, VGA speed 3.2%, uh, and the check it integer 1.7%, uh, with the floating point test scoring exactly the same. So the conclusion here is that the double sigma variant is in total something like 2 to 2.5% faster, with Doom actually getting a significantly higher boost. Of course, uh, this benchmarking is not enough to satisfy me and then started the rising the voltage trying to see the limits of the CPUs here. So first of all I did a quick test and I put the voltage to 5.2 and tested all of them. And the interesting thing is that uh, the 25 MHz model was not the slowest one. This one at this voltage managed to boot at 50 MHz, but uh, then it was unstable. On the other hand, the newer 33 MHz chip, okay I actually have uh, two of these, one completely failed at uh, 50 MHz, and the other was again unstable, but a little bit uh, better than the 25 MHz one. Now the interesting thing is that the one that clocked the uh, highest was again this double sigma variant, and this is very interesting and probably a bit uh, lucky of me. This one did uh, 50 MHz no problem at uh, 5.2 volts, and actually in the end uh, topped at uh, 51.2 MHz at uh, 5.35 volts. This is actually a great result, and I'm quite happy with this. 51.2 MHz is also the limit where I can run my memory at uh, zero weight states on this motherboard. So now again the question is how does this uh, faster core with uh, zero weight states RAM at the 51.2 MHz compares to my top configuration that is with uh, the AMD with uh, one weight state and uh, 55 MHz. The rest of the configuration, the settings is the same. So here I have my system with the Intel CPU running at 51.2 MHz. And the BIOS settings, okay, are more or less the same. The ISAC lock divider is at one third. And okay, the RAM weight states are at zero. And uh, yeah, first of all, here are the results from TechIt. 8386 at 51.3, of course. Here the frequency is not reported 100% correctly. Then uh, here is a landmark. Again reporting this uh, Intel 8386DX. Then uh, here we have Spitzes. And finally the results from the cast check tool. So now it's time for some uh, real benchmarks. And all these results should actually be record breaking for an Intel uh, 386 chip. First uh, 3D bands. And the result is uh, 21.8. Then uh, Chris 3D bands. 
and the result here is 11.4 frames per second. Then a PC player benchmark with a score of 5.5. .5. Then here uh, Doom full details. And here we have uh, 7441 real ticks. This is actually higher than uh, 10 frames per second. So yeah, this is an Intel 386 machine scoring more than 10 frames per second at uh, Doom uh, full details. The low detail score is at uh, 40.2 frames per second. And the medium details is at uh, 22 frames per second. Finally here, uh, let's go with Quake. And the score here is 2.7 frames per second. Or to be more exact, it's uh, 2.68. And yeah, this again is a bit of an unreal result for an Intel 386 chip. So let's now have a look at all the results in order to also compare this to our top configuration of the AM386X at 55 MHz. And first of all, let me note that 55 MHz is actually 7.5% higher than 51.2. So if these configurations were the same, the performance difference should be 7.5%. And yeah, in the end, this uh, faster uh, Double Sigma variant, in combination with Zero Waste States RAM, is not enough to beat uh, our top configuration. But still, in total, it's only 4% slower. This is uh, not that bad, actually. The largest difference was uh, with 3D Bench and uh, Chris 3D Bench, while in PC Player Benchmark 2, the difference was only 2%. So more or less, uh, that goes for today. I hope uh, you also find my findings and uh, benchmark results uh, quite interesting. And I think next time is the right time to have a look on these 386 replacement chips, the TX and the 6486 DLC. And as usual, I will uh, push them to the limits and try to see how far I can overclock them. So if you don't want to miss this, you know what to do. Subscribe. And of course, feel free to leave any comments, likes or uh, anything else. So that is for today and see you again next time.